This is a digital corpus of St. Lawrence Island, UK. I am Lane Schwartz, an assistant professor at the University of Illinois. This is joint work with my colleagues here and at George Mason University. I want to begin with my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to the Yupik people of St. Lawrence Island. It is my great privilege and honor to be able to work with your language and to spend time with you in Alaska. The Inuit Yupik language family stretches from Greenland in the east across northern Canada and northern Alaska to western Alaska, St. Lawrence Island, and the Chukotka Peninsula of Russia. The work that I'll be talking about is centered here in Gamble, a village on the northwest cape of St. Lawrence Island, Alaska. The red house that you see here, the red roof, is where I actually lived as a child. Next to it is the old elementary school, and across the water is Chukotka in Russia. The Yupik people of St. Lawrence Island and Chukotka are close relatives, and prior to the Cold War in the 20th century, there was free travel between them. We see here in Teal, St. Lawrence Island, and Chukotka, the single language territory of St. Lawrence Island, also known as Central Siberian Yupik. Here we see that the island has two villages, Gamble and Savunga, and on the Russian side, the village of Ungazlik. This is a view of the village of Gamble as I took it out of the window of the twin engine airplane as we were flying into Gamble. Here in the back, the large blue building is the combined elementary and high school. This building is where I've conducted most of my work. I'll give you a brief overview of the outside contact history of the Yupik peoples. So the first outside contacts, aside from those in the immediate territory neighboring them, were Russian military incursions that began approximately the year 1700 and stretched into the late 1700s. In the mid to late 1800s, American whaling ships contacted the Yupik peoples, both on St. Lawrence Island and in Chukotka. Beginning in about the 1880s, the Russians and then the Soviets administered the area territory in Chukotka. Beginning in about the 1890s and through the present day, there are missionaries from the United States as well as teachers from the lower 48. Let's take a brief look at the Yupik orthographies that have been developed and used over the years. There were a couple of non-standard Latin orthographies that were used in the early 1900s. One was developed in Chukotka and one was developed on St. Lawrence Island. Neither are in use today. The modern Yupik Cyrillic orthography used in Russia was developed in Chukotka in approximately 1937. The modern Yupik Latin orthography that's used in Alaska on St. Lawrence Island was developed in 1971 and has been used extensively since then. All of the work that I'll be talking about today uses the Yupik Latin orthography from Alaska. Beginning with the development of the modern Yupik Latin orthography in, in the 1970s, there was an extensive literature developed for St. Lawrence Islanders. This included an oral collection of local lore, the lore of St. Lawrence Island, a three-book trilogy that was recorded 
by recordings of elders telling stories of the past and was then transcribed and translated and published in book form. Let's take a closer look at some of the other items in the Yupik literature. During the Soviet era, there was a brief period at the beginning of the Soviet era where an extensive education and materials development campaign was put in place in Chukotka. During this time, mostly Cyrillic orthography books were developed for the school and local communities. This unfortunately ceased in the mid 20th century. In Alaska, after the development of the modern Yupik Latin orthography in the 1970s, educational books were created for the Bureau of Indian Affairs schools in Nome, Alaska, and on St. Lawrence Island. This included a set of pre-primers, early elementary books, that were developed in the 1970s and 1980s. In the late 1980s and mid, early to mid 1990s, a set of elementary readers were created for mid elementary use, bilingual readers, both Yupik and English. As mentioned previously, oral narratives were also recorded and transcribed. In addition, we have a set of example sentences. This includes example sentences that are end of grammar exercises in the Yupik grammar created by Stephen Jacobson of the University of Alaska Fairbanks. There are also examples in the Yupik language, Yupik English dictionaries. And finally, there is the Yupik New Testament, a Yupik translation that was begun in the mid 20th century and completed very recently. All of the items shown in bold here are already part of our current digital corpus that I'm presenting today. The remaining items we are planning to continue scanning and eventually add to the corpus. In all of these uh, in collecting all of this work, it was important to work with stakeholders in, Saint, in the St. Lawrence Island community. This included the tribal council, the local school district, the Alaska Native Language Archive, and Wycliffe Bible Translators. These are the copyright holders of the various data. We've collected letters of permission, which are here at this URL. We began this project by scanning all of the data that we could find, all of the books that were created and brought to Gamble as part of the Materials Development Center work at Gamble School, as well as those created through other sources, such as the earlier uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs readers that were created in Nome. Some scanning effort was conducted out on site here at the University of Illinois. We have copies of some of the works. Much scanning, most of the scanning was conducted on site in Gamble, and some scanning was conducted at the Alaska Native Language Archive at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Here is a picture of our team conducting field work in the Gamble School. We conduct the field work in the Gamble School Library, which is also where the books are located, and we did the scanning in the school office in the Gamble School. Following scanning, we performed OCR and light proofreading by non-native non speakers, that is English speakers part of the project, 
What you see here is part of the OCR process. We used a number of tools, including the open source Scan Tailor program, as well as the commercial Abbey Fine Reader. We made the decision to use Abbey Fine Reader. This wasn't a decision that we made lightly. We wanted to use open source OCR, but due to the lack of training data, we just weren't able to get the quality high enough. And we were very happy with the high OCR quality using Abbey Fine Reader. In addition, Abbey allowed us to break out the portions that were graphics, as you can see here, the text portions, shown in green, and Abby also aided the proofreading process by pointing out the low confidence characters, which you see here on the right in teal. Let's take a look at the statistics of our digitized St. Lawrence Island UPIC corpus. In total, we have approximately 41,000 sentences digitized. This works out to 268,000 UPIC word tokens and approximately 87,000 word types. If we look at the breakdown of the different genres, we have a small sliver that came from the Jacobson example grammar, the end of chapter exercises. Approximately 25% of the data comes from the UPIC oral narratives. These were stories uh, that UPIC elders told. Approximately 33% of the data is the pre-primers and elementary readers, and approximately 41% from the UPIC New Testament. Let's take a moment to look at the text normalization that we did once we digitized the materials. To ensure consistency in the plain text version of the digital corpus, we have a written style guide that was enforced through a combination of manual and automated means. Punctuation was normalized and separated from words. Each sentence was put on its own line with a blank line between paragraphs. The decision of where the sentence boundaries were was a manual process. Because we have such a relatively small corpus, we wanted to make sure that we didn't lose data due to bad tokenization. Sometimes in complicated sentences, such as situations in the New Testament, where you have a long complicated sentence with embedded quotes, this decision of where to place the sentence boundaries was non-trivial. For the Bible data specifically, the start of each Bible verse is explicitly marked with a punctuation symbol. We also included, wherever we could, the English translations of the UPIC data. Most of the books, not all of them, but most of them, have UPIC, have UPIC data and also English translations, usually at the end of the book. The English texts have not been processed in this way yet in terms of normalization and tokenization. This was deemed a lower priority than the UPIC text. Eventually, as time permits, the same tokenization and normalization conventions will be applied to the English texts. Finally, let's look at the applications that we hope to have for our UPIC digital corpus. One obvious place where we're hoping that the digital corpus will be of use is in additional study of the language. The St. Lawrence Island UPIC language is relatively understudied with respect to the other languages in its language family. We plan to use the corpus to do detailed studies to find additional uh, verification for current analyses and find places where the current grammar falls short. Let's take a look at this one interlinear glossed example taken uh, from the St. Lawrence Island Dictionary. 
we have here the a verb the word to work with an augmentative suffix this is a derivational suffix that can attach to verbs this is normal and expected because of what we know about the language. This process is described in the dictionary and in the grammar. However, an example that we found in our digitized corpus is this same augmentative suffix being applied to a noun. Now, according to the grammar and the dictionary, one would not expect this derivational suffix to be allowed to attach to a noun. Nevertheless, this example shows that in real corpus data, people do actually use this augmentative suffix to attach to a noun. Another major use that we're planning for our digital corpus is as a utility, a library, a resource for the St. Lawrence Island and Chukotkin Yupik communities. To the end of allowing the Yupik literature to be easily accessible to the Yupik community, we are planning on interactive offline ebooks. As a proof of concept, we had one of our speakers record a narration of one of the early primers. We then use that audio to create an interactive EPUB book that can be downloaded and used offline by members of the community so that they can listen and read the book on their own mobile device. Finally, let's take a look at the ongoing work. The URL you see here is the GitHub group page where all of our work is, is located. This includes the digital corpus, letters of permission, our finite state morphological analyzer, the electronic form of the UPIC dictionary, a web utility that we have built that allows for transliteration between Cyrillic and Latin orthographies as well as IPA. We plan to continue our digitization work with digitizing the remaining materials at the Alaskan Native Language Archive in Fairbanks. This includes some Latin orthography materials as well as a, as a great amount of Cyrillic, Cyrillic orthography materials collected by a University of Alaska linguist in the Soviet Union during the 1970s. We plan to continue work with our morphological analyzer, including neural and probabilistic variants. We also are building a syntactic parser and plan on using the digital corpus in testing both the morphological analyzer and the syntactic parser. We are planning on making a morphologically aware electronic dictionary and library of all of the digitized books to be made available via a mobile app that can be utilized offline. Most of the members of the St. Lawrence Island community have access to mobile devices, but have very expensive data plans. And finally, we're planning on additional research, such as the possibility of utilizing this corpus to develop text completion apps. I want to once again thank you for listening, and most importantly, thank and acknowledge the members of the St. Lawrence Island Yupik community. Iran Sikana Khalat.